What's going on guys? Um, today is Kim Il-sung's birthday, the brutal dictator of North Korea. He was born April 15th, 1912. Uh, at, but he was a brutal, selfish dictator. He burned over 2,000 Christian churches as well as Buddhist temples to the ground. He replaced God with himself. No freedom of religion. Between 1945 and before the Korean War started in 1950, when he controlled North Korea, was well, you control North Korea from 1945 until his death in 1994, there was a massacre where his fighter jets massacred and killed hundreds, if not thousands, of Christians. And uh, to wish him a happy birthday, sarcastically, I'm going to donate this book called The Aquariums of Pyongyang, 10 Years in the North Korean Gulag. It's by Kong Chol Wan. Okay, Kong Chol Wan uh, was, he was from Japan, actually. He, um, his grandparents uh, lived in, were from Jeju, uh, but during when Japan occupied Korea between 1910 and 1945, uh, the, his grandparents moved from Jeju Island uh, to Japan um, for, for work opportunities because there were more work opportunities in Japan at that time um, than in Korea when Japan occupied Korea. And instead of returning to South Korea, uh, instead of re returning to South Korea uh, or remain in Japan, they chose to go to North Korea. And they found out it was the biggest mistake they ever made. Uh, his uh, Kong Chol Wan's grandmother was um, a devout communist. She always attended meetings, uh, always part of any communist workers union, any communist organization. But him and his family were still thrown in the North Korean gulag. All the family was, because during the um, during. Japan's occupation of Korea. His grandfather had some ties with the Japanese government, but it was more ties to Japanese business than anything else. Um, but the whole family got punished for it, and everybody but his grandfather went to the Yoduk concentration camp. That's Camp 15. But his grandfather went to a more brutal camp and apparently died in the coal mines. Okay, um, they got so Yoduk concentration camp. Um, you you looked for rats because you were starving. You looked for rats and you killed them and you, you burned them, you fried them uh, because the food was just so minimal. And, you know, his grandmother mentioned that he, that she gave everything to the communist party, but she still wound up in a, in a North Korean gulag in a concentration camp. Now, Kong Chol Wan was released on good behavior. He was released on good behavior because he didn't cause a lot of trouble in the concentration camp. But because he listened to a foreign broadcast, a foreign radio, he was going to go back to the concentration camp before he made his escape to China. And he escaped to China, and then eventually he found asylum in the embassy um, of South Korea. Um, and, and found asylum in South Korea, I should say. Found asylum in South Korea. And Kong Chol Wan... Um, really, um, at the time when he defected, it was around, and when he published his works, it was around 2003. And he thought at that time that a lot of people, um, a lot of people, South Korea was having a sunshine policy with the North, where they were giving unconditional economic aid. Um, that they really didn't care about the defector stories. Now it was changed when I was there. They really looked, at, had a. They they felt for the defectors when I was there just recently, but in 2003. Uh, a lot of times that was not the case, and he felt like he had a lot more sympathy from the U.S. than he did from South Korea about his uh, the horrors and the defection. Um, but it's changed now. Um, lots of North Korean defectors are in South Korea, and they speak about their defection, and the South Koreans listen very, very attentively, which I'm very grateful for. I'm very happy for. I had a really good time in South Korea, um, and they were very compassionate to the defectors when I was there, personally. Um, but in 2003, as I said, it was not the case. Uh, but he published his work. He talked about the horrors that he experienced in North Korea. And some students in South Korea would talk about how it was South Korea's fault or it was the U.S.'s fault that North Korea was there. It was, you know, Kong Chol Wan eventually said, if North Korea is so great, go live up there. Being facetious or sarcastic, obviously, um, because North Korea, if you read this book, North Korea is uh, uh, basically no way to say it, but it's a hellhole. Um, it's hell on earth. So that, and there were people in the concentration camp as well that had lived in Japan during when Japan occupied Korea, um, but they um, they were they were loyal to the Communist Party, loyal to Kim Il Sung, but they still wound up in the concentration camps. Um, it was the same as the famous opera singer called Kim Kim Yong Gil. 
excuse me, my pronunciation's wrong, but that opera singer was as loyal as he could be to the uh, to Kim Il Sung's regime, but he wound up in a concentration camp just because he lived in Japan for a while when Japan occupied Korea. So. Anyway, sad story, and he goes into detailed account. They witnessed a lot of executions. You witnessed a lot of executions. You eventually became desensitized. When you're living in the camp, executions happen frequently. So you eventually became desensitized to where it didn't bother you anymore. So during that time, they would go try to pick up any vegetables that grew in the grass, any turnips, anything of that nature, because they were starving, because they were so hungry um, inside that concentration camp. So anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.